Okay, thanks. So my name is Chandler Wilkerson. I work for Red Hat as a senior software engineer. Um, also, like a lot of the other Red Hatters here, working in the OpenShift virtualization product um, project, and I guess product as well, as an uh, integration engineer. And so the purpose of that is basically to, to take the output of the engineering team that uh, is kind of working so closely with Kubevert and then try everything uh, as like puzzle pieces with everything else that uh, Red Hat offers. And so we, my team tends to do things like uh, plugging in uh, OpenShift Virtualization plus XYZ other products. Uh, and through part of that work, I've gotten involved with the, uh, the documentation, uh, especially, you know, two of the repos that are, are uh, responsible for the kubert.io website. And so I just wanted to kind of go through, present a bit on what that looks like. And so just to kind of give a um, high level overview of how the kubert.io website is put together, we have uh, the kubert.github.io repo in uh, GitHub and then the user guide repo. And, and these two repositories kind of dictate all the content that we have. Uh, right now it's in two separate repos, uh, probably for historical reasons, but also because um, having the, uh, the face of the web page be a little bit more stable and a little bit less touched by a whole bunch of different uh, contributors made some sense. So, so keeping everything in the user guide, uh, you know, for, for more documentation features and things like that uh, kind of works out. And so of course the, the original thrust of this presentation was going to be a tutorial, but the, the time frame got a little bit shortened. So if people want to follow along, I'd, I'd be happy to help out, but we don't have a whole lot of time to kind of sit and debug a bunch of uh, different projects. So I'm going to go through what it means to actually make changes to one of these repositories. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and take on uh, the user guide because that's where most of people who are working on patches and working on features are going to end up making their contributions. And so kind of getting ahead of myself a little bit, but uh, there's kind of a top level workflow question. And that question is, do I really need to like follow this whole tutorial that I'm going to lay out in front of you, or can I do this the easy way? And so the, uh, the easy way essentially is uh, using the, the website and making your changes there. And so for smaller uh, pull requests or for smaller changes rather, uh, if you're just fixing typos, updating something, uh, you don't need a whole lot of people to look at your work and, and uh, agree or disagree and, and um, maybe even edit together, uh, add, add their own uh, contributions. And if you're just adding something that's already there or you know, adding a feature to an existing page, something like that, these generally you don't need to go through the, uh, the full process of you know, like forking the repository and uh, like doing the traditional uh, Git workflow pull request kind of thing. Uh, you end up with a pull request at the end of the day. And I'll, I'll show that process really quickly. But the, uh, the yes answer, when you really do need to um, go through all the trouble of forking the repository, uh, we'd like it if you created the container, ran the container locally, I'll get into that later. Uh, that, that is mainly when you're dealing, obviously, with uh, not small PRs. And you're, you are working with uh, collaborators. You are uh, adding brand new pages. Uh, that's a little bit harder to do in the web interface. And uh, you're making maybe some changes that go across multiple pages. Uh, things like that, it, it really makes sense to get a local copy of the website running so that you can do your testing. And so, you know, kind of taking a break from that, we'll go the, uh, the easy path here. 
And so essentially you pick a page that you see something wrong on and click this little icon here in the corner. Uh, essentially the edit icon uh, recently due to the uh, sharp eyes and uh, kind of the recognizance of some of our uh, maintainers, we were able to change a setting so that this now actually kind of works. Uh, previously, we, we have um, like a signing commit, sign off commit requirement that the uh, web page, unless a flag is set, doesn't do on its own. And so we would have a lot of people come in, try to make a single edit, and then we'd say, well, you need to sign your commit. Like, oh, well, you know, that's too much trouble. I'm just close it. And so now when you do a click on the um, on the website to make your changes, you get a full sign off here. And, and so you can see um, this is an example of just taking that same page that we were just on and doing a quick change. And this is one that I just did live a couple of days ago just to make, uh, make this slide. And then a couple more clicks and you're into a PR. And so then, you know, you're just waiting on somebody to pick up the PR and start, uh, you know, do a review. And that kind of process still has to happen. You have to have somebody say it looks good to me and you have to have somebody say that they approve it uh, from two different lists. So you have reviewers and approvers. So what does it look like when you have to uh, do something a little bit more complex? What's, what's the not so easy way? Well, you know, the obvious path, uh, a lot of people are probably used to this. Um, so you can do the, uh, the fork, you, you do the, uh, the local clone of your copy. Uh, it's kind of nice if you then uh, add the, the actual original page as the um, upstream, essentially. And so you, you get into the, the uh, process of having two remotes. Uh, one is your origin, which is the one that you own. And then the, the upstream is the covert orgs version. And so what that gives you the ability to do is later on down the line, when some changes have been made and you need to rebase, you can actually rebase against upstream, then handle your changes and then push things to your own repo. And so, you know, the, whenever you're ready to start uh, some sort of feature or, or, you know, some sort of um, addition to the, to the website, uh, you, you check out your yourself a feature branch, and then we get into the make file. And so the the make file is pretty well documented. If you just type make, it'll give you all these nice, uh, helpful explanations of what what it can do. Uh, a couple of things in here that I'd like to highlight. Uh, if like me, you're on a uh, SE Linux enabled workstation, like I I use Fedora. Uh, you need to enable this with a uh, SE Linux enabled equal true, or else uh, some of your Podman stuff will not work very well. Um, you will need to do the, the build image if, if you're wanting to go through the process of seeing uh, everything locally. So, you know, just to, to kind of back up, like, why are we doing all this stuff with Make and, you know, we're just editing a website? Uh, essentially, all this does is uh, create you a container that you can run locally that will host your host the website, and we'll do the the full Jekyll build and you know all that stuff that's under the covers that you don't necessarily need to mess with unless that's the uh, thing you want to make your uh, update on. Because every now and then uh, things get updated and you know that container breaks, so we try to keep on top of that. But uh, you know, if you notice something, say something. And then uh, running the, the container, obviously. So you would do something like make build image, and then you go have a coffee or tea or something. And you come back, and hopefully it'll have built nicely, and you say make run. And at that point, you can uh, you know open your web browser to localhost colon 8,000 in the case of user guide, or localhost colon 4,000, I believe, in the case of the, the main website. And you'll see just the, the copy of the page. And the really nice thing about that is, um, as you make changes to the code in your repository, it will automatically and quickly update that, uh, that view in the web browser. And so you'll actually have, like without even having to refresh, you'll, you'll see changes popping in. 
And so that gives you a really good kind of almost a WYSIWYG editor kind of thing for our particular website. And so I just wanted to go kind of through what it looks like um, on the back end kind of automation CI CD side when you create a PR. And so the first thing that happens is, you know, GitHub comes in, runs a bunch of actions and checks. And so the first one is, is it signed off? Do you have the DCO? Do you, did you um, add that feature? And so if you're committing from the local repository, you need to do dash dash sign or, or I'm sorry, dash dash sign off or dash S uh, whenever you do a commit. And if you're doing it on the, the website now commits are for or commits are forced to have uh, sign off automatically. Uh, we also then spawn off a Netlify preview, and so our site is integrated with uh, Netlify, although not for the um, not for the final delivery of the site. That still goes through GitHub Pages, um, but Netlify has the infrastructure to hold all of our um, all running PRs, basically, it'll hold uh, previews for um, for what the site looks like at that point in time, at the PRs point in time. And so then, you know, the next flags that it, the uh, automation is looking for, the looks good to me. And once you get approved, then the Kubert, Kubert bot takes over and it starts to merge. And then it also, uh, the one of the other repositories in the Kubert system, the Project Infra, where a lot of the underlying CI CD kind of processes run, will take over. And there's a the same container that you're building locally. We've got a, a copy of it off in uh, Quay. And that gets pulled in and uh, used to make the build. And so then that container has a special, basically it's the same make file. So if you, if you did make build, it would probably be very confused because it expects a certain environment, but make build is the set of instructions that um, this container uses in order to actually check out the GitHub pages branch, push the, the new site into that and, and publish. And Let's see, I think I've kind of run very, very fast, uh, even for the time that I was expecting to have because I'm at the end of my slides. But um, I guess we could take on questions or you know, like try to run people through this if anybody's willing to. I do see a couple things in chat. Um, Yeah, that, that diagram, I just kind of made that the other day in, in Google Sheets, but I'm sure we could get that. <laughs> sure we could get that somehow. Yeah, I'm going to second the live demo plan. That sounds fun. I, Even if it's just getting I'll as far as we have time to here. Yeah. All right, I am... Um, We'll see how much I can actually get through. So I guess the, the basic idea here is you kind of hit um, Kubert IO and you find something that you want to change. So to avoid picking on anybody in particular, we'll just change this uh, welcome guide. So we'll go in and I don't know. Maybe all these things should be capitalized. <laughs> Except for cloud providers. And so test update. Uh, it'll create its own little patch name. Um, obviously, you can't commit to main. It's protected. Good, uh, good hygiene there. And so, sign off and propose changes. And it takes me straight to um, the open a PR. And so, this could be like a
So in real life, hopefully you, you put enough information in there that somebody would actually be willing to review this and agree. We've, we've tagged uh, Chris over here and Stu as our reviewers. And the checks are starting to run. And so here's where you can kind of go in and once the checks run, which probably takes about uh, four or five minutes, <laughs> you can get um, the pages changed one, which will show you the, uh, the Netlify. So if you pop into Netlify, I'm, I'd have to double check whether you would get to see this. I think uh, the, the actual deploy stuff is probably public, but there are bits of the Netlify site that I can see because I'm in the, the list of maintainers that can see things. So I, I don't want to promise, over promise what you can actually see if you click on that. But um, essentially, you should be able to watch the uh, deployment going. And it seems to have actually finished already. So hopefully we can see our site. And here's with our capitalized changes. But you can note that this is in, in Netlify. So you can, um, anytime somebody's creating a PR, um, whether they use the long or the short process, you, you get these uh, previews. Um, sometimes the preview is not that helpful because somebody will add a page and it'll say, okay, well, here's the index, uh, go find the page yourself. So you have to kind of remember where your page is in the hierarchy and sometimes navigate to it in the preview. But, um, generally you can find, find things and make sure that, um, for instance, some, um, kind of markdown formatting hasn't gone wrong and, um, you know, like tortured a, uh, un, you know, unlined list or something like that. Yeah, and, and the uh, as Chris says, the uh, preview URL should actually be in the PR now. So, so one place you can look for that is in in the checks. Um, under pages changed. And so now we're getting to see something. No generated pages, one asset changed. Okay, maybe in the conversation. Sometimes down in the conversation, you can see in the um, part down here, and it'll show um, the pages changed. You can see the details there. And yeah, generally there will be a list of pages that get changed here. So in this case, we're kind of a little bit different. But if you were to say, look at this one I created the other day. <laughs> and it's decided to be a standard uh, live demo blocker. Yeah, so so as Chris mentions, uh, the CI should also be doing some uh, spell checking, link checking, things like that. Um, we do have some of that, but some of that got turned off more recently because those pieces of the uh, container were broken. Uh, it's always a, yeah, it's always a process of keeping little bits and pieces of this system working and, and going. Um, yeah, I don't know why the, the link from here isn't working for this, but uh, perhaps that's something to do with the editing directly on the uh, page there. And so the other side of this would be um, if I wanted to stop sharing this, and check time real quick. <laughs> OK, about five minutes left. Let's try sharing the screen. So 
so I can get a terminal. Okay, so here, um, wow, that was cool. I made the font so big that it decided it needed to be on the other screen. Okay. So I'm, here I am sitting in the user guide repo. Um, uh, that is, we are on main. So we check out a feature live branch. We figure out something to edit. Too much. Uh, let's talk how about okay. Just put something in there. If I've done my homework correctly, um, I have a container built and we wouldn't lose like 20 minutes trying to build that. Okay, so we're now running on localhost 8000. Should be able to pull that up. <laughs> Another Murphy. What did I, oh, oh it, it, sorry, it takes a moment sometimes. I'm trying to go too, start, too fast. Uh, quick starts, test do not merge. So there's the, uh, the text. And just to kind of show like, yes, actually you can hack this pretty fast. So with a save and yeah, you get multiple copies, so you can see that uh, updates are happening pretty quickly here. And that's that's our uh, container system. Any questions? All right, that was fun to watch, and. Uh... Of course, none of the Kubert manage, uh, magic works if we don't have documentation for it. Right? <laughs> so yeah, definitely time for Q&A from the audience, if anyone has anything on their mind or is considering getting started on their own contributions that they've been thinking about. So Chandler, I actually have one. Um, I'm guessing mm -hmm. that, especially since you kind of work at the intersection of lots of different products, um, this documentation workflow is probably something you really interact with regularly. Would that be a stretch or is this pretty core to some phases of your work? Well, it's kind of funny because the generally the documentation we would do, we'd start off with uh, either ASCII doc or like a Google doc kind of thing and, yeah. you know, write up and, and then go through the editing process. But so this is, I would say this is where I've really encountered the most Git, uh, like workflow process. Uh, so I, I think it's definitely strengthened my, my understanding of how Git works uh, because I don't actually do that much of the, you know, coding development. So I'm, I'm not, you know, deep into Go or anything like that. Cool. All right. Um, as far as the tests that are run, do you know if we're doing spell check and link? 
checking. Right. So, so Chris brings up an important yeah. point. Yeah, because he, he mentions, um, so there is a um, check spelling and check links uh, test that you can run it with that container. And yeah, I'm, I'm remiss in, in not pointing out that, you know, if you are doing these larger PRs, you should definitely be trying to uh, run through the spell checker and run through the, you know, the link checker to make sure that uh, things actually work as advertised. One of the things we might run into with that, because we don't have, if I remember correctly, right now we don't have a periodic test that uh, forces us to go through the link checker. Uh, so somebody writing a PR in one section, you know, just adding a little piece of documentation might come up with like broken links over here. And that was actually one of the reasons we took it out because we didn't want to block people from adding documentation because some other link rotted, which would happen sometimes. That definitely does. I, I just know from my own experience, it's always obnoxious when I realized that I committed something to an active PR and all I had to do was to lint something before committing it to have that yeah. whole, whole process cleaner. Well, thank you very much for sharing. Um, and presenting on that, it definitely makes the documentation process more relatable.